So when you get started with binary exploitation and you have done your first buffer overflow with shell code, you will run eventually into some issues. Because I get often questions where people run into these kind of issues, I thought I'd quickly make a video and, and show you a couple of things. So here you can see just a simple test program. It's a typical shell code tester. It's really just to basically simulate a binary buffer overflow exploitation challenge. So this is compiled in a way that I can pass in shell code via the argument and then the shell code should be executed. So I went to Shellstorm and I looked for a 64-bit shell code and just randomly here I selected this one. This should execute bin as h. So obviously now I'm copying the raw bytes to my exploit. So on first sight it looks pretty okay. I'm executing test and then we have the first argument. So inside this argument we have an expression that will be evaluated. In this case, we are using echo because we have these escaped raw bytes and we basically want to get the raw bytes out. So let's try this. Illegal instruction. Okay, so what went wrong? How can we debug this now? So we don't really know yet what's wrong here, but there's a quick test that you can do. So there's this instruction called in three, which is called trap to debugger. It's an interrupt three and it has the opcode CC. So let's replace the first byte in our shell code with CC. Okay. It still didn't work, we get a segmentation fault. And this is not what we would expect. If we would see the CC being executed, then we would get a trap. We would see a different output. So this means the CC is not being executed as we want to. So let's use GDB to look deeper into what's happening. Okay, so we get the segmentation fault at this address here. So let's try to figure out what might have caused the seg fault. Ah, let's uh, look at Intel disassembly. All right, so we can see here a very weird move. It tries to move a value from RAX at the offset RDI times two plus 34 and move that into EBX. Like that's very weird code. And all of this looks like very weird code. This doesn't look like normal assembly. But when you just got started, you might not really recognize or have the experience to see that this just looks wrong. But regardless of this, this instruction caused a sec fault, which means it tried to access some memory that is not accessible. And so we can try to figure out why this happened. So this instruction tries to move a value at an address specified by RAX together with RDI. And we can see that RAX is zero. So probably here that, that is the issue. It tried to move a value from address zero, which just uh, there's nothing there. Now in our setup, we do assume that we were jumping to our shell code, like we understood the vulnerability. I mean, this is just a shell code tester. We know it would jump to whatever is in the arguments. We, we assume that this should work. So for whatever reason, it jumped into bad code here. We, we must have supplied some bad code and clearly this assembler code looks uh, kind of wrong. So you would want to verify that the data you wanted to input is exactly what landed in memory. So one way to do that is to look at the disassembly here with examine five instructions at RIP and compare that to the intended shellcode, but this doesn't match at all. This looks very different. But let's look at the raw bytes of this. So here I'm examining 10 bytes from RIP. And again, here is again a little bit experience required. When I look at these byte values here, I see these are ASCII values. So let's actually look at this as a string. This looks exactly like our input. There is literally x42, x58 in memory right now. So this means your input was not interpreted as raw bytes. It didn't parse x42 as literally the byte 42. It put in there x42. You want to input the raw byte 42 and you would expect the 42 to show when you were looking for bytes, but it's not here. But interpreting this byte sequence as a string, then the x42 shows up. So x42 are just ASCII characters. So literally the string x42, it's not the raw byte 42. So we can go back out and look at our shell code again. Let's just check if our expression in here is correct. So let's just echo the string. And we notice we get the raw bytes out. Another tip here is just to check this briefly with hex dump. To the left, you can see the raw bytes and to the right, you can see what it's interpreted as ASCII characters. 
And again, this confirms that our echo did not actually properly encode here raw bytes, but placed them as literally strings. And then maybe you will realize you forgot the E flag to interpret the escape sequences. And when you do that, then suddenly the bytes on the left look correct. So now we can fix our code. See, now we get the expected trace breakpoint. This is caused by the CC. Let's say you got this far. And so you will replace the CC again with the real byte, which was a 6A. But something else in your code, in your shell code was, is broken, okay? So I'm corrupting here the shell code now. And you get, again, segmentation faults, very weird. So you try this again. You place the CC at the start and you see a trace breakpoint. This means you successfully started to execute your shell code. This CC was executed and triggered this trace breakpoint trap output but the rest of your shell code seems to be broken because when you execute it without the CC, you get a segmentation fault. So again, you can now go into GDB and we can run it with that. And notice that with the CC, we are triggering a breakpoint because this is the instruction for breakpoints. So GDB now stop and then you could even like step forward and check what happens. And now you can actually debug step for step your shell code and see if it works. And now we run into a sec fault. So we know something is wrong with our shell code. So again, let's examine our shell code and let's compare it with the real shell code. Now, I know I already kind of made a mistake because I replaced the 6A with CC. So this means I corrupted already the first instruction here. Uh, that's why this already looks wrong, but it's something keep in mind and just compare. But other than that, we have the increment AH, but we are missing these instructions. So here you can see that just the shell code is not correct and you were able to debug it. So here you can clearly see that your shell code is incorrect and you successfully debug this. And now you can just make sure to fix that. Using CC in this case can also be useful to find exactly where it went to your shell code. Because now we have here a breakpoint and we can look at the backtrace. So we can see here that it's coming from main. Now this depends on if your stack frames are still proper. When you do buffer overflows and you are overwriting stuff on your stack, then this output will be wrong. But if you look at this before you are smashing the stack, you can still see here where you were coming from. And so we can see here that we were coming from this address in main. And you could use this to now set a breakpoint there. So now obviously you could disassemble main because we have symbols and we would see here a call and we could we would know this is like the vulnerability here this is where we want to set a breakpoint to debug things so this is another good way to debug your shell code before you would if you know where you would enter your shell code for example from a buffer overflow at the return so you, then you set a breakpoint at the return if it's now in this case we know it's this call here that will jump to our shell code so we will set a breakpoint there run our code again and now we are still in main and with the next single step forward, we would enter our shell code. This is another way how you can debug and see, does it jump to the correct address? Does it actually execute the shell code you expected here? Remember, just examine the memory that you think is your input. Yeah, this looks like the code we've entered in three is the CC, so, so this worked. So I hope this was helpful to you. Maybe I even sent you this video because you asked me a question about something not working for your shell code or your buffer overflow. In this case, I just want to quickly mention at last, please make a good test case like this here and then copy it. Show me that you set a breakpoint at your return and that you step through it and that you look at the registers and that you look at the instructions and show me how you compared your shell code and made sure everything fixes. Now you have the tools to be able to debug this yourself. And there are many complications that you might still run into where you maybe need to ask somebody. But if you show people that you have tested this yourself and you can just copy and paste this into Pastebin and share this along your question, then we can see, oh yeah, okay, look at this instruction. This looks wrong. You overlooked this. Or so we, we would be able to very quickly help you. So that's all I got for you today. Quick reminder, check out my binary exploitation playlist and also check out the playlist of this short series. See you tomorrow.